Hi, I'm Rajiv, and today we're actually meeting somebody that we've already met before. She's invited us into her home, Sofika Jelik, who is an expert in the art of pisenke. <laughs> Sofika Jelik. Did I say Jelik properly? Perfect. <gasps> Perfect. Oh, working on my Ukrainian pronunciation. Sofika, why don't you tell everybody how you would define pisanke? Pisanke, it's a very, very old art form. It's a tradition that started in Ukraine in pre-Christian times uh, from mother to daughter and we are still practicing it today. It's an egg with symbols on it, and it's a ritualistic object. So that's Pisanka 101. Pisanka. I can give you Pisanka 306. But in its, in its <laughs> most elementary form, it's, it's writing on an egg. It's exactly, it is writing traditionally on a full raw egg, and it's a symbol of rebirth, the rebirth of nature, the rebirth of the sun after a long winter. So I personally am thrilled to be here because in third grade, my friend Tanya Soloka had her mom come in before Easter to show us something. And we didn't know what Mrs. Soloka was gonna show us and she set up at the front of the classroom and she pulled out some eggs and she pulled out some dye, some bottles of dye, and then she lit a candle and she started doing something and I was spellbound, and by the end of it, I was determined to do it myself. So there's Tanya, and there I am. Oh, you're so cute. I was a bratty little kid that if I didn't get what I want, I caused a ruckus, and- I And you got this. But this was one of them. Mom, we need to figure out where to get this stuff, but these, seeing these eggs today is just a thrill for me. Every year since the third grade, as I was growing up, I would do this first with my sisters and then with my cousins. It became a family thing and it took all day. Each of us would make one egg, but at the end of the day, it was so special because we had spent like eight hours around the table making this beautiful thing. I mean, look. That's, I love this egg. The deer are a symbol of prosperity and strength and there's a legend connected to the deer. You see, the god of the underworld stole the sun. Mm -hmm. and there was darkness everywhere. Everybody was too scared to go into the underworld to get the sun back, except for the deer. Really? He had enough courage. He went down, he brought out the sun on his antlers, and he restored light to the world. Now, Sofika, you've been making these for a long time. Since w what age? I was about five or six, I don't quite remember, but I was sitting on my mother's lap and she had an egg, there was a candle, and I said, Mama, please do a row of stars, then dots, and that was my joint egg with my mother. And then one day I came home from school, I must have been 16, 17, I was in high school, mm -hmm. and my mother was making a pisanka and it was extremely simple. And I saw the book that she was copying it from, and my eyes opened up, and I started researching. I started learning about all the legends. And don't forget, this was during the Soviet Union still, so it was difficult to get information. And I realized there is much more to this than a beautifully decorated egg. It is a decorated egg, absolutely, but there is a whole history of a nation inside these eggs. And that's why these simple designs mean so much to you. They mean so much to me, and in my opinion, it's much more difficult to do this. It takes more skill. Yeah. Everybody will always do geometric eggs. Mm -hmm. They're straight lines. I call it mindless work. It's time consuming, Yeah, absolutely. But it's, it's straight lines. To do a meander, like this is there's no beginning and end to that's this world. exactly it symbolizes eternity and this particular design this is from eastern ukraine from the poltava area would be hung in the doorway and if any evil spirit entered he'll become trapped in these lines but it's eternity there is no end so he would be stuck here and your house would be evil spirit free every single egg that i've picked up today 
you've you've told me not only about the design but the history and the symbolism. I don't know which one I like better, actually creating the eggs or learning about it. Mm -hmm. I'm so excited if I find a new source and there's a new legend or there's a new old design or it's just to me some people think I'm crazy but it it really I love learning about this mm -hmm. and I think with any subject the more you know the more you realize you, you know, don't know absolutely nothing oh yeah. yeah so you said that you started really on your mother's lap yes as that was your first visceral experience of this I think what I've learned from you the biggest thing my takeaway is that if you're focused so much on what it looks like, you're missing the point. You're I'd... absolutely, that's exactly, you hit the nail on the head. You know, it's, it's strange, but sometimes when I'm sitting and it's really quiet or I have a little bit of classical music playing, and I'm doing, let, let's say, just this egg, and I'm thinking, some woman, years and years ago, in this area, and this happens to be from the area where my father is from, from mm -hmm. Western Ukraine, the Lviv area. Somebody was doing this, and I am continuing it, let's say a hundred years later. It just, it, it's special. Yeah. It's, it's special, it's hard to describe. I go to the Hindu temple, mm -hmm. and the practices in the Hindu temple haven't changed for some 3,000 years. And when I'm making a flower garland, and I'm making the flower garland now out of banana plant <laughs> fiber, that, no yarn, like, yeah. but it's the old way. And when I take it to the temple, I think the same thing. I think even though my grandmother's not here anymore and my mom's not here anymore, I am doing something that for thousands of years in my family, people have been tying these flowers with this banana fiber. And, and you are, you know, the tradition goes on with you. Yep. That's exactly it. And when I'm gone, Maybe somebody will be doing, mm -hmm. maybe not, but that's, it's, yeah. it's a wonderful thing to connect yourself to a... To ancestors. Yes. Yeah. Well, I would be so honored if you would show us how to, Absolutely. how to actually make one of these eggs. Maybe we'll do something very simple. We will do something <laughs> simple and not geometric. Okay. Because I know you did geometry. I've done eggs with the straight lines. Exactly. So we're going to do just one symbol on an egg. It's going to be a tree of life. Mm -hmm. And it has no anchor. It has so it takes a little bit of skill, but I think you're up for it. And it's simple enough that we won't be here for seven hours? Maybe six. Okay. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> you can use a brown egg, but white is a little bit better, I think. And just when you're looking at eggs in a grocery store, just make sure they don't have bumps or cracks or anything else. Okay. You need a candle mm -hmm. and some kind of candle holder. You need beeswax because it's all done with the beeswax. And then, of course, you need a stylus. There are many different names of it. It can be called a kistka. It can be called a pisaltse, pisachok, but for our purposes, it's a kistka. It can look like this with a wooden handle, and this one has been through a lot, as you can see. It can be with a plastic handle, and there are different sizes, small, medium, and wide. And when you say small, medium, and wide, you mean the size of the hole the, exactly. that the wax Thank is you. coming through that creates a thicker or thinner line, right? Exactly, okay. yes. And usually the wooden styluses have holes that are a little bit wider and the wax flows quickly, which means your lines are a bit thicker, thicker which is sometimes needed yeah. in certain designs. Now, I, I, because, so I'm smiling like a child here because this brings back so many memories. When I first went to buy these tools, I, I went to the store and I remember asking, yeah. what is it called? And he said, Kiska. Kistka, kistka, and it's stuck in my head, kistka. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you can buy a kit. They do come with three different sizes of kistkim. They come with the wax, and they come with the packets of dyes, which you can buy them in all different colors. This is scarlet. This is baby pink. May I see that white one? This one, please. Of yeah, so this, this also makes me smile because this is for 20 years, <laughs> this packaging has not changed. 
Nope. It, this is this is what it looked like. If it works, <laughs> don't change 20 it. Twenty years ago. So these are special alkaline dyes made especially for these eggs. Of course, in old times, dyes were made of roots and berries. But this, I would recommend these dyes. Okay. Yes. How do we start? What I usually do is this is not a trick, but this is everybody does this now. Wash the egg in a solution of vinegar and water. I've never done this. Uh, this might be something new. And what happens, the dye catches better. Oh. That's what I found. So just for, you know, you can hold it in for two minutes, for a few seconds. But here you go, why don't you put it, and remember that it is an egg, so just don't yep. throw it in. People just think, oh, it's a potato or some, it's, it's a fragile egg. So this is just sort of cleaning it off. Just cleaning it off, exactly. Okay, so whatever design you do, you take your pencil and very lightly, I usually do a dotted line, divide the egg into two parts. Lengthwise. Yes, lengthwise. Okay, and then horizontally. Half? Half. You then have four triangles. One, two, three, four. Okay. So this would be the center of your egg. And the same thing here. Okay. Where um, those two lines meet. That okay. is your center. Okay. Now, we are doing this design. Okay. This is the tree of life. Is this an old design? This is a very old design from the Kiyu region, the capital. Okay. So this is a traditional design. Now, you can do it with a pencil, yeah. or you don't have to do it with a pencil. You're gonna do it with a pencil. You wouldn't do it with a pencil. This I don't, but I will okay. do it today. No, no, let's, let's, I, w I would like to do it without a pencil. Ooh, okay. So the candle is lit. Mm -hmm. If you look at your design, someplace here would be the Middle. You know what? Let me just show you this with a pencil. Sure. Just so. Okay. So you have the branches and we have the leaves. Mm -hmm. And the leaves are symbolic of strength. So you take your stylus. Yep. You heat it up in the candle flame. Just. Okay. The main thing is don't keep it like this because the wooden handle can burn. Okay. So in and out, in and out, make sure it's a little warm. You take your beeswax, you scrape a little inside, and it's easier when the copper funnel is heated, right? You heat it up by the candle flame again, and you can, ah, uh, you see? You test to yes. make sure that it's making a line. Yes. There is such a, there's such a nuance to be able to use this properly and that was one of the things whenever we would induce one of our cousins to mm -hmm. this for the first time it would take them quite a while to learn how to hold this how yeah. to melt the wax but then once it happened you, you sort of there's also some people say there is the proper way to hold the stylus mm -hmm. there might be but it's like penmanship right you either hold it like this like the it what i hold it like a pencil okay some people hold it like this yep whatever is easier for you. So, you heat it up again, and you wax the areas. You want to be white in your design. Right. The wax protects the part of the egg under the wax, so that when you dip the egg into the next dye, which is yellow, the part underneath the wax remains white. So we have this white egg. If we're copying that egg, I'm gonna to look to this egg at all the parts that are white, and yes. I'm gonna draw those lines onto this white egg at this point. Absolutely. Okay. Oh, that's good. This is I didn't mean to sound surprised. It's been 15 <laughs> years or something since. That is <laughs> very good. <laughs> Triangle for the trunk. The triangle for the trunk. And, and you know what I love about this? We're both doing the same design, but yours will be totally different than mine. <sighs> and you don't forget to breathe. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> I'm now, rusty, Sofika. I am it's very been so much. Many years. 
Yeah, I'm gonna say that you're doing a really good job. And you're fast. Wow. Jinkuya. What is it? That's a job. What is it? Jinkuya is thank you. In Ukrainian too? Yakuyu. Yakuyu? Yakuyu. Yakuyu. Very good. Yeah. Yakuyu. Okay. If people have a hard time saying "ja," they say "ja," but yeah. you said "ja." Ja. Yakuyu. Yakuyu. Prošu duže. You're welcome. Yakuyu. Okay, there. Th this yes. is wonderful. Same design, totally different. Yes. <laughs> you finished quicker than me. Well, mine is <gasps> not. Mine is not. <laughs> oh, but you have to write your initials so we know it's your egg okay. and the date. Oh, oh. You have to. I'm gonna do. I'm gonna try to do a little bit of calligraphy. Oh, calligraphy. Oh, that's beautiful. 2024. Yes. There. So May I see it? Yes. Just for? The teacher. Very nice. I think this is going into the A category. I thought this was gonna be B, but I think, I yeah, think. Could you? Prošu duže. Okay, now, everything that is covered up with the black wax. The wax is black because the beeswax turned black in the copper funnel. There are no markers, there are no colored pencils. It's batik on an egg. What does batik mean? Wax resisting process. Where does that word come from? You know, I think because it's in Indonesia. Yeah, because in Sri Lanka we have batik. There we go. It's the lost. It's the, the not, lo not wax. Lost, uh, wax lost resist. wax resist. It's exactly. The wax resist process on fabric. Yes. It's exactly the same way. So I was interested to hear that you're using the same word batik for this. It's the same word. You know, there was so much trading going mm -hmm. on. Who knows where this came from? So there's a sequence to this yes. color process. We don't just dip this in random colors. We go from lightest to the darkest. Because if I were to put this egg into the red dye, it yeah. would become red, except for the parts under the wax yeah. that remains white. But then if I wanted to have a yellow color, there's no way I would get yellow after red. Right. So you go from lightest to darkest, and now we put it in yellow. Look at that. So, Okay, what is the color underneath the black wax? White. Yes. And now the egg is yellow, so now yes. we're gonna look on this egg and we're gonna see we have the center. Yes, some of the leaves. Some of the leaves. And here we have randomly placed what I call blobs. Okay. Just randomly placed wherever you want them. Okay, Any anywhere? Anywhere. Okay. And for the larger parts, you can try to heat up the kistka a little more and then the wax flows quickly uh, and it covers up more space. I love doing this. So do I. <laughs> now the fun part, the blobs. You're not gonna do, you're actually making them circles though. You're not just dropping right now. You can. You, you know, sometimes when the wax is so hot, yeah. especially with, let me try to do this. I take the wooden kistka mm -hmm. and I really, really heat it up. And I put a lot of wax in here. Heat it up, heat it up. Oh, oh wow. That's what I mean, randomly placed. So there has to be a lot of, okay, I'm gonna Yes. That. There has to be a lot of wax in here. Yes. I like the, the actual drops. They feel organic. Okay. okay. I have my, Random dots in yellow. Now, what do you think we were supposed to do? Uh, this is tricky. Okay, so I, this this always confuses me. Is the next color red or green? Uh, no, the next color is the next color is red. No, <gasps> and it's not green either. Okay, what? There's a lot of green here. But if we dip the egg into the green, it won't go we, red. we won't get red afterwards. If we dip the egg in red, we won't have green afterwards. Well, uh, that's where the Q-tip comes in. We have concentrated green dye, mm -hmm. meaning I used half a package of, of the powder from the dye and maybe, oh, three, four tablespoons oh. of water. And a tiny, tiny bit of vinegar. Mm -hmm. Now, take your Q-tip, 
put it in the green and you cover up the areas you want to be green. It doesn't matter if you go out of the lines too much, not in this design. So we need to cover up the petals. Yep. We need to cover up the triangle stem and some of the leaves. Okay. I, I had no idea that, that this mm -hmm. little trick existed. Don't tell anybody. Okay. We won't no. tell anybody. Okay. And then for this, just randomly. Oh, the, you do the blobs with yeah. this. Yeah. Uh, so tricky. And then you have to pat it dry. And now, okay, what do we do now? We're gonna cover the areas that we want to keep green exactly. with wax. Exactly. And remember, you're not a true Pisanka writer until hot wax has fallen on your fingers and okay. burnt you. Okay. Well, I believe that has definitely happened to me before. And you're not a true Pisanka writer unless your fingers are green, blue, yellow, and you look like you have a disease. Okay. Very good. You're quicker than me. I'm not really taking the time that I should be taking. You know, it, it's you're right. If if you're demonstrating this, it's not the same thing as you're doing this at home. Yeah. It's a totally different feeling. You know, the great the thing that was that this brings back about when I would do this with my cousins and my sisters is we would sit around the table and no one's looking at each other because they're all doing this, but we're, we're all, we were all talking. Exactly, yeah. And you know, and I think of this, when we say quality time. That's exactly what it is. It was yeah. an activity that was re like one full day, eight hours of real quality time with these cousins that we just loved. And what did you do with the eggs when you we finished kept, them? We kept them. Oh. And my sister, I think, still has them. I mean, I, I, I am a, devout disciple. Keeper of things? No, no, opposite. Of I'm a devout um, Marie Kondo convert. Oh, no. I throw things away. Oh, you have to come here then because <laughs> I, I live in a small New York apartment. Oh, I do too. I'm drowning in books. Well, I, d I live in a small New York apartment that has a lot of space because <gasps> I throw everything yeah. out. So now, everything under the wax, under the black wax, is either white yellow or green. Yeah. The next color is red. Mm -hmm. So I take this egg and I put it in red. Okay, so now we cover up all the areas that you, wa that you wanna be. Red. Yes. Everything is covered up and I am putting it into the black dye. When the egg comes out of the darkest color, which in this case is black, it looks like this and you might think, oh, what happened? But this was always the part that we looked forward to. Because the magic part. There are many ways of removing the wax by the candle flame. First of all, it has to be steady. Now you can burn your fingers very quickly. You involuntarily drop the egg and that's the end of that. Mm -hmm. So. You can hold it by the candle flame, not inside, or the way I do it, you don't keep the egg in the same spot, but you see the wax melting and melting and melting, and it's almost time to say, wow. <gasps> wow. And the colors show through. So you wiped it immediately? Yes, because, let me show you something. I'm melting, I'm melting. I'm melting, oh. I'm melting. <laughs> exactly, I'm <laughs> melting. Oh, this is so beautiful. Oh, lovely, lovely. The wax hardened. Oh. So, and yes. always keep the tissue or the napkin in the palm of your hand because if it's here, <laughs> so. Gentle. Very gently, very gently. You see the wax melting again. Now the blobs are showing through. And this is really my favorite part. You have the design in your head. You think it's going to look one way. It never does. And wow. this is the egg. Shall I go for it? Go for it. Okay. 
Okay, we're, you have to hold the napkin. I'm going to hold this here. Yeah, yeah. No, no, okay. No? No, no. Because if you put it into the candle, yeah. the candle, the flame smokes and you can char the egg. Oh. Yeah. So A little bit closer. So don't let it touch it. No. That's why I put it on top of the plate. Yeah. Uh, you see it melting? Uh, oopsies. I got in yeah, trouble from the teacher. That, look at that. Just be careful of your fingers. Okay. I, I have seen grown men cry when they break the egg in the last stage. Oh, really? Oh. <gasps> Look at that! This really is the, this is kind of the best part of this it is. process, is the reveal. The aha moment, to quote Oprah. <laughs> Okay, always put it, you see what you're doing? Yeah, this putting... is hot, you're putting it here, the wax from here is getting here. Oh. As I said, there are different ways to melt the wax. Some people put it in the oven. I, f I am familiar with mm -hmm. that method. Remember, clean part. Oh, clean. <laughs> okay, that's a B minus. Okay. okay. <laughs> that is an A. Okay. Now, I don't know about anybody else, but I think this is one of the prettiest eggs I have ever seen. Oh, you're just saying no. that. No. <laughs> I mean, yes, I have to say that, but I truly, truly mean this. The same egg, and it's totally different. Mm -hmm. So no two eggs are ever alike. Each one is unique. Now what we would do is we would varnish them to preserve the colors. So this is varnish? Yes. It's okay. non-yellowing varnish. Water-based? Uh, no. Oh, it's it not It cannot water -based. be water-based because really? if you varnish this, all the colors come up. It has to be oil-based. It takes about 24 hours for it to dry. You can use polyurethane if you want, mm -hmm. uh, but I use varnish. I love this egg. I would love it, Sofika, if you could add this egg to the collection at the Ukrainian Institute and send this one along with all of those back to Ukraine. It would be our honor to put this egg into the installation. Thank you. This just has been so wonderful for me to revisit this tradition that started when I was a kid in elementary with school. With Tanya Soloka. With Tanya Soloka. I'm going to send her this, <laughs> this video. But to be here with you, to have learned so much more about these eggs and what they really mean to your people and the history of your people, especially now, really, the significance. Yes. I'm, I'm very honored to be sharing this tradition with all of our viewers out there. And I brought something for you that I made which I know, for a fact, you will be able to use. Oh, these are too nice to be used. You must use them. <gasps> these are beeswax candles. And I make these with wax from New York City beehives that are on the rooftops of all these buildings. They have beehives on the rooftops of Manhattan? Yep. These candles, whenever they're burned, magic happens. Well, there you have it. Pisinke, from an expert. It has been so wonderful being here today and doing this. Thank you so much, Sofika. If you would like to try this, I'm sure we'll provide some links to resources. Mm -hmm. And please be sure to check out Sofika's beautiful work, which you will definitely be inspired by. Thank you. Thank you. It has been an absolute pleasure.